is the uh, CFP uh, College Football Foundation uh, fifth annual extra yard for Teachers Week and then uh, continues this weekend uh, with a nationwide celebration of teachers. And I just wanted to uh, you know, go on record and say that uh, you know how important teachers are, not only in Ohio, Columbus, uh, throughout the country, and how much of an impact they had on my life. Uh, and I don't, I don't think they get nearly enough credit that the, the work that teachers do to our youth and, and shaping their lives is critical. And so I just wanted to you know, publicly thank all the teachers, again, you know, throughout the state of Ohio, Columbus, and then throughout the country. Um, in Miami, Ohio, coming in here this week, uh, 3.30 kick. This is a team who's been through, uh, you know, they've been in tough environments before, you know, so they're not going to be intimidated coming into the shoe. Uh, and again, several, uh, you know, Ohio guys on that team who will be highly motivated coming in here. So uh, we can adjust the 3.30 schedule and, and, uh, and do a good job of preparing and get ready to play a good game. That will open up questions, front row, middle, Dave. Right, I was, I was re-watching the game, and Indiana's defensive coach has told the Fox broadcasting crew, Gus Johnson and Joel Klatt, that they wanted to attack the right side of your offensive line. What do you make of those comments, and, and did you notice that during the game they were trying to attack the right side of your offensive line? Uh, I didn't. Um, you know, I think, you know, Brandon Bowen and, and Wyatt Davis are two of the better linemen in the country, and uh, so uh, it's not something really even noticed all that much during the game. Uh, I think they did bring when we were in the boundary of that side, you know, some corner blitz a few times, but, uh, you know, for the most part, they were they were uh, lining up in their defense and playing their defense. But you know, I think anytime you know, there's somebody in there who's untested, like Brandon, you know, hasn't really played a bunch of tackle, that they want to they want to find out what you're made of and, and, you know, why it's getting more and more film out there for people to look at. But uh, but I think they're answering the test. Uh, front row left, Mitch. Hey, Ryan. Uh, after starting the season the way you did. <clears throat> How difficult is it to keep your guys on task and keep pushing them to get better? I mean, they played so well against, obviously, overmatched. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we played well, but we didn't play we didn't play uh, great. You know, we, we played hard, we played tough, but we have so many things to clean up. And when you watch the film, uh, you know, it's actually really frustrating to watch. There's so many things we could be cleaning up there. So, uh, you know, the coaches are working at it. We started that on Sunday. and making sure we start addressing some of those issues. But, um, but you know, it, it was the same thing when we started a couple weeks ago. And it was all about, you know, don't worry about what people are saying. You know, I don't know how much respect we have throughout the country coming into the season. But, uh, but, but you know, we said ignore the noise. Well, it's the same thing now. Just because we won a couple of games hasn't changed anything for us. And so we need to stay focused on right now. And uh, we, had, we do have some momentum going right now, but we've got to keep that going. And, and that's incumbent upon the coaches and the leaders to make sure that, that we stay focused and we don't get distracted. Right behind, uh, Bill. Ryan, um, when you were thinking about, I guess, maybe the, the framework of what you wanted your defense to look like, how much of your own successes and, and failures as, as an offensive play caller, things that worked well against you and things that didn't work well, informed those decisions? Well, I think that uh, you watch a lot of film and you see different people play. And, and you know, each week uh, it's thousands and thousands of clips of film. and. And then you go into a game plan, you have different ideas, and you go up and some, some of the best coordinators in the country, uh, you know, this league and some of the leagues that I've been in, and, and you just try to figure out what the trends are moving forward. And, uh, you know, I think what we're doing right now is right where we need to be. You know, you can see you know, a lot of teams are, are kind of going down this road right now. Uh, but again, when it, when, it, when it came down to it, you, know, you look at who you have, you look at your four down front, because, you know, we recruited well up front there, uh, you know, with Larry and, and the guys he's got. And then combine that with stopping the run, which which Greg and, and Larry and Al and those guys are doing a great job of. When you match that in with, with Jeff's background, uh, zone coverage, man to man, zone pressures, uh, you know all those those different things that he has in his background, I think that gives us an edge. And and that that's schematic. But at the end of the day, that's not really what what we're doing a great job. To me, it's that we're we're playing tough, uh, we're playing hard, we're tackling well, we're running the ball, we're playing with good emotion. Um, because again, watching the film, there's so many things to clean up, and um, you can overcome, you know, a bunch of that stuff with effort and with toughness. And that's what we're doing right now. But if we want to get to what we need to get, we're going to have to make sure we clean up a lot of these things. And when you're when you're watching film of opponents, or you're you're in that room back there drawing stuff up on the whiteboard, is there any common thread among the defenses you face that give you the most trouble, or you know, going into that week, it's going to be, and you know, you're going to get a good test? Is there any common commonality among those defenses? No, not really. I mean, I think. 
uh, everyone tries to stop the run. That's the first thing that they do when they walk into their room. They have to stop the run. And so however teams do that, whether it's pressure, whether it's put an extra guy down in the, in the box, whatever that might be, they're going to do that. But rarely do we see teams that just go completely off the deep end and just change what they do because typically that doesn't go well. Um, you know, there's a lot of spring practices, a lot of preseason practices oops, where guys, uh, you know, are getting a lot of reps in that in that uh, in that defense. And if you start changing that, or you start going to a blitz that you've never seen before, and all of a sudden you get looks, you haven't practiced, that's when you can get hurt. So that's why you build that foundation in the spring, you build that foundation in the preseason, and you go back to it. Now, how can we change up the look? That's simple for us, but difficult for the defense. That's the key to coaching. Uh, right next door, Ari. Hey, coach. I think at the beginning of this year with you replacing Urban Meyer and having to replace a quarterback, the national viewpoint for this program was skepticism in terms of whether or not you guys could be at the elitist of elite still. And so far through three games where you guys have played, the tone and the viewpoint of this program has shifted um, from a national perspective. I'm just wondering how early in the season as a coach, and maybe this is your first year going through this, do you know you might have something? When other people are taking notice, do you – internally kind of get that feeling too and you know you look around in the room and you look at the film and you see like do you feel like this team has something special uh i've felt that for for a little while now yeah and i've talked to the team about that um, i think we can can be great we're, we're nowhere near where we need to be um but we can be we have the ability we have the talent we have uh the leadership but if if, if we want to get to where we want to go uh we have to take it one week at a time and again uh I know it's cliche, but we keep talking about you just have to do a great job today. And, and today's a really hard Tuesday practice. And if we train the way we train, then, then Saturdays will take care of themselves. If we stay focused, if we don't get distracted, those type of things. Uh, but it's the same thing. It's the same people, you know, I'm sure, who, who had those doubts early on. And now, you know, they're excited about what they see. And, and that's great, but that has nothing to do with us. You know, this is about the way we go to work every day. And, and we have to just stay focused on our jobs. When you look at the position you're in, I know there's probably not a lot of time for reflecting, but there are so many different routes in coaching to get to this point, to get to the highest point in college football, being a head coach. Do you ever look at the roster? Do you ever look at the film? Do you ever look at the room and go, this is my first year and look what I'm in charge of and like feel, I don't know, thankful that you are in this position and to be able to you know lead a team that's this good this soon in your career? Yeah, I mean, I think you always are. I think that now is not the time for that. You're just so immersed in what you're doing. And, uh, you know, obviously extremely grateful to have this opportunity. But to be around the coaching staff, I'm around the type of people is, is what makes it special. And this is obviously a special place. Um, and, and I think right now, you know, the culture is strong. And what we're doing right now is exciting in terms of guys are playing hard. There's great energy and, uh, you know, recruiting and throughout the team. You know, guys are playing hard. We're getting a lot of guys on the field. We're developing some of the youth in the program. And so uh, we got to keep building on it. Um, but it's, as, as we all know, we have to produce each week. It's a performance-based uh, business, and, and we have to bring it this week. Otherwise, you know, that all goes down the tube. So the um, challenge is to, is to continue what we're doing right now. Far left, Lori. Um, Coach, kind of jumping off Ari's question about when do you know what your team is? When do you start getting a good idea of what your opponents are without, like, going back to, say, a true freshman quarterback's high school film? Is this the time of year where you're starting to – get your arms around what you're going to see on Saturday ahead of Saturday? A little bit. You know, you start to get more and more film out there, so you're getting a better idea uh, based on what, what their foundation is. And, um, you know, they're going to have adjustments in, in game. But uh, every game it gets a little easier to be able to recognize what, the, what they're doing. Um, but, yeah, I don't think you truly know what a team is until you get to, towards midseason. You know, guys start making adjustments, guys make changes, personnel, schematically, uh, whatever that is, to, to adjust their team. And that, that's college football. Um, so I think as we start getting into the next few games, that, that you know teams start to solidify themselves. And since you talked about getting an idea early on that this team had the capability of being something special, what was it that gave you that sense? Uh, just day to day, uh, the type of people that are here, uh, the type of kids that are here, uh, their work ethic, um, the way that they uh, motivate each other, uh, the way they work in the weight room, you know. Uh, you know, academically, you know, all, all phases. You know, they're, they're the kind of kids that, uh, you know, you want your family to be around. You want your son to be around. There's great role models. and You know, my son goes into that locker room, and then they're great kids to be around. And, and uh, there's a lot to be said for that. Right, right. Austin? Right. One of the first things you said after the game was, you know, Justin 
left, left some yards on the field, and he, he acknowledged that as well. When he reviewed it on film, what was causing that? Well, I, I, there's a lot that goes into it, and again, it's it's experience. You know, we talked about that going in. That um, you know, we've we've won handily here a couple games, but still, you know, the experience of playing quarterback uh, still doesn't have a whole bunch under his belt. So. Um, it's one thing to do in practice, another thing to do in a game. And the more reps you have under your belt, the more comfortable you are. And uh, you know, going back and looking at the film on two of those throws, I mean, he had a guy right in his face. He did on uh, the long one to Chris. Um, he had a guy coming right at his arm, and uh, and then the, the touchdown that he missed to Austin. Same thing. There was a guy right in his face. So you know, there's a lot that goes with that. You know, we got to clean up the protection. We got to clean up the throws. He's going to have to make throws and. and he gets hurried and gets pressured. He gets hit, um, but but overall he's managing the game well, and uh, you know just keep watching the film and learning from it. You know, um, so much of it is experience at quarterback. He referenced setting his feet some. If somebody's barreling down in your, in your face, maybe that's hard. But how do you guys work on that? How do you how do you correct that issue? Uh, well, in practice, what we do is we typically have somebody uh, who's there, so it's not just you're out in open space. It's very very different. For a quarterback, like when he's on seven on seven coming up in high school or even in practice, when there's there's nobody around you and you're throwing a football, um, there's always going to be somebody around you when you're in a game. So we'll have people during seven on seven, you know, kind of stand in there and simulate the rush. Sometimes a coach will jump up in front of him, he'll have to slide his feet, uh, things like that. To, you know, sometimes in the drills, we'll, we'll throw different bags at his feet to make him feel that 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 presence of a body right there. And um, again, he's come a long way, but we're continually building on that. But um, but, but again, I, I think where he is right now is light years ahead of where I thought he'd be. So uh, we'll just keep working those drills, and, and the more he feels comfortable, the better he'll be. Second row right, Tony. Ryan, I'm not sure how much college football you watched this weekend. You guys probably got home a little bit earlier than we did Saturday. Um, but there were quite a few mistakes uh, late in games that cost teams the opportunity to win. I'm wondering how much time do you guys spend on creating awareness, building awareness, and teaching guys on the field, off the field, about those late games situations? Yeah, we do a lot of it in the preseason and then the spring. Uh, preseason, we do a bunch of situations where we talk that through and all the different things. Uh, Fridays are typically a really good um, time for us to do that in walkthroughs, where we we'll go through these different situations and uh, go through the plays that we would call in those type of situations. Uh, you know, Mike and Kevin are really on top of the game management in terms of the clock, when to take a knee, when not to take a knee. Um, we, we, when games like this come up, you know, we'll talk about it. We'll actually put the film up and, and as, as a staff talk about, you know, what would we do in this situation and what plays would we call, what defenses would we call. And just it triggers great conversation. Um, and so, you know, I think you can overdo it sometimes with those situations, you know, and become distracted. But um, you got to have your plan ready to roll and you got to have great communication and, and um, those decisions should already be made before you go into the game. Third row left, Dan. Ryan, you have some freshmen who have already played three games now. How much over the next couple of weeks do you have to have conversations about, you know, which of these guys should be redshirt and which of these guys should we keep playing all year? Yeah, that, that, that conversation is going to be happening pretty soon. And, uh, you know, these guys came here to play, and so uh, we want to play with depth and we want these guys to play. And so, uh, you know, when in doubt, we're probably going to play them if, if we think that they can help us this season and really create depth. Um, if we think it's a situation where, you know, we're already three deep at one position, he's probably not going to get on the field other than you know, maybe at the end of a game, then, then we probably won't. Uh, we'll try to be really smart about that. We wouldn't want to burn anybody's red shirt, but at the same time, the more experience they get this year, the better they'll be next year. I mean, what's kind of your philosophy on that? I know Urban Meyer's philosophy was we really don't red shirt unless we have to. Kind of what's your philosophy on, you know, whether a guy should red shirt, whether that's beneficial for them? Yeah, I, I think that when you, uh, when you, when you say we're going to red shirt this person, they, they almost start to lose hope a little bit. Like, okay, I'm, I guess I'm not playing this year. And so we don't like to do that. However, uh, you know, with this new four game rule, it allows the opportunity to get these guys in the field to figure out, you know, can they help us this year? And if they can't, we want to play them. Um, if they can't, then, then usually typically we'll kind of hold off and wait until it's an emergency situation or we need them at that point in the game. But we certainly would not tell somebody uh, at this point of the year, hey, you're redshirting for the year. You know, we just don't know. You know, here are the games you played. If we put you back in a game, it's because you can really help us win a game or two or three. Um, and then we'll kind of just make the decisions as they come up. Uh, front row, middle, Joey. 
you, you touched on uh, Brandon Bowen at the top. Um, for a guy coming off injuries, um, you seem pretty pleased with his performance. Is he maybe ahead of schedule where you expected he would be? Well, I don't know. I don't know about ahead of schedule in terms of that. I mean, he's, he's fully clear and he's 100%. So, um, you know, it, it's not like we, we were expecting him to take longer to get going, you know. He came off his injury. He had his surgery last year, and, and he's 100%. Um, but I will say that he is practicing, you know, at high level. I think he's playing strong. Uh, and, and as we start getting, you know, into you know tougher games and the season wears on, his body, you know, starts to get worn down a little bit. That's going to be the big challenge for, for Brandon and, and see if he can withstand the whole season, and stay healthy, and take care of his body. But uh, so far, so good. And any any more clarity as far as the back at the quarterback spot? Chris Jarnoff gotten coming first. Yeah, not really. I mean, the, the more Gunner is here, the more he can learn the offense, then the more he can, you know, show uh, what he can do. It's hard during uh, preparation, you know, the bye week's a little bit better time for that. We can't really, uh, you know, let those guys compete. They kind of split reps with the twos because we're trying to get the starter ready. Uh, but uh, the more that Gunner can learn the offense and feel comfortable with the terminology, the reads, the progressions, the protections, the better off he'll be. So uh, no change right now, but, uh, but, but he's learning more and more. Front row left. Nathan? You mentioned uh, Justin being light years beyond where you thought he'd be. You meant that just mechanically, and what needed to be fixed? With it? Nothing needed to be fixed. It's just again, um, when somebody you know with that little experience comes into a situation like playing quarterback at Ohio State, you know, there's just a lot of things that go on. There's a lot of things that uh, you know he needs to handle, and, uh, and so far he's handled them. But um, you know, he's, he's going to quickly learn here is that you know at Ohio State, you know, the more you win. <coughs> the more the stakes get higher and higher, and uh, you know, the more is expected. So that all comes with it, but, uh, but he's got a good head and shoulders. I think he handles it well. He's got good poise, um, and he's just got to, he and Mike got to get in that room and just keep working on getting better. Somebody, one of the receivers had mentioned preseason that they thought he had a better arm than Haskins. Is, do you, is there a part of him that still is just learning how to use that arm strength the best way, you know, the right touch, that sort of thing? Uh, it's hard to compare. I mean. Arm strength is like saying, you know, who, who has hits the longest drive. You know, it doesn't. It's not really something that's that important. I mean, if somebody has significant, you know, arm strength issues, that becomes a problem. But for the most part, it's how quick can the ball get out? Uh, how accurate can you be? Can you anticipate? Can you throw a touch? Those type of things. And um, Justin has as strong as arm as he needs. Um, and, and now it's just again seeing the reads. And the more comfortable you are with your feet. The more comfortable you are with your reads, your progressions, protections, all those things, and just seeing the coverage, the better off it's going to be. Front row right, Bill. Yeah, uh, I took my question. Um, you knew Justin was very talented. Um, is there something that there's just no way you could have known that he has pleasantly surprised you or ultimately concerned you? Uh, no, not really. No, I mean, I think when you when you look at the way he approaches his work, um, you know, he handles it like a pro in terms of. Uh, knowing when he steps on the field, you know, he can take a meeting to a field. That's important for a quarterback. Um, there's a lot of guys who are talented out there. But when you need to take, you know, 20 reps to run a play, that, that's not good. Um, you know, we, th we, we throw a lot of offense at him. I mean, we're, we're doing a lot of things on offense right now. And, you know, whether it's, you know, the spread stuff or the 12 stuff or under center or shotgun, I mean, I would say right now we're, we're probably doing more stuff now overall than we've ever done just in terms of, you know, variety. And so, for him to be able to handle all that is, is, is strong. And you're playing a team this week that their coach even said on their conference call that if we were playing a recess game, you'd have the first 85 picks. Um, I know that guarding against complacency is a, is a major thing here. How do you do that this week? Well, I think you just you just get on the film and you, and you started off with, you know, what, can, what corrections need to be made, not only by your unit, but also by, you know, just personally. What, what do you need to work on? this week to get better. Um, and then nothing can change, you know, whether it's game three, game seven, game eight, you know, human nature tells you to cut corners, tells you to change things, easy to get distracted, a lot of people in your ear, you, none of that stuff can change. You know, we have good momentum right now, we have to keep that going and we can't get distracted. And uh, once that happens, then you set yourself up uh, for failure. So that'll be the focus this, this week. Um, it's not gonna be manufactured, we're not just gonna make that up, uh, but we're just gonna hold them accountable like we always have. And, you know, that doesn't change from when we were in the spring to when we were doing preseason workouts. Every day has to be consistent. And, you know, so far we've done that, but, but it's something we have to stay on definitely about. Front row left. Doug? 
Is there anything about Justin's natural throwing motion that would give him a tendency to throw high if he's not careful? No, not really. I mean, most most guys, when you look at them coming out of high school, if they overstride, then they have a tendency to sail the ball. Um, Dwayne was the same way. JT was the same way when, when we first got here. Um, you know, Justin is no different. You know, if you overstride, typically your elbow drops. And so you know, that's why we have the hoops out there. And that's just something, that's with any quarterback. Um, and so, you know, we have baseball nets and different things that we have to drill that. Um, but again, that's, he's not uh, unique in that situation. Um, Justin has played well. When we talk to Justin, he's very low key about it. He's keeping it team focused on it. Did you tell him to be that way? No, no, I mean, that's, that's Justin. You know, he's, one thing I, I, I tell all the quarterbacks is you gotta be yourself. Um, there's certain characteristics that all leaders have that really good quarterbacks have and traits and virtues. But at the end of the day, you have to believe in who you are and you have to be yourself. And JT was very different than Dwayne. Uh, and, and Justin's very different than, than Dwayne or JT. Um, and so you have to just be yourself in the end. Um, now there's certain things that, that I'm, you know, we're all working on to, to you know, make him be the leader that we need him to be in the end. Um, but that's with any young quarterback. And so uh, we'll keep, We'll keep working at it, and, and he, he's good. He takes the coaching. He's very intelligent, and again, all we can ask is that he gets better every week. And along the lines of some of the things asked today, last week when you were talking about this team, you mentioned, I think, the phrase best in the nation a couple times, and you guys want to be the best in the nation at this. Just what would you, what context would you like your guys to have in their head of, you got to win Saturday, you got to win in the Big Ten, you got, but, but do you want, a belief or a thought process around here that, yeah, we should be the best in the nation at what we do. Do you want that kind of thought out front? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, we, we, we've talked about it before that, you know, we want to be the best at what we do. And we've talked about what that means, whether it's, you know, a sniper in the military or, you know, the best surgeon, you know, and, and you know, there's, there's no small surgeries if you're a surgeon. You know, there's no small games at Ohio State. you you got to be, if you're the best in America, you need to show that every week. And, you know, that's that's our goal. Um, and we're not ashamed to say that. I mean, we want to be the best. But but that's that's another conversation. You know, how do you go about doing that? And that's to stay focused on, on this game and really just this practice. If you can just focus on this practice right now, have a great Tuesday. Because when we played good, we've had good Tuesday practices. We've had good Wednesday practices. And when you put that in the bank, when you get into the game, that's what you can fall back on. Front row right, Tim. You know, uh, earlier, several weeks ago, the lament was y'all didn't have necessarily a number two running back who had asserted himself. What kind of sense of relief is it, I guess, after the last couple of games, especially after Saturday, to see Master T rise to that occasion? Yeah, I wouldn't say it's re relief as much as it is just excitement to see him get going because uh, I think we all kind of had an idea what we had, but it was hard because of these nagging things that were going on. We couldn't get him practicing, get him going. And then, um, you know, it, it's kind of the way we've been talking about it leading up to this week. You know, we said he had three, I guess, three, four weeks of practice in, and he was just about ready to, to, to get going, and, and he did. Um, and so that was exciting to see for sure. And, uh, you know, he needs to assert himself and start to be a guy we can count on. And uh, when you look at your defense, Josh Proctor had a couple plays he could have made Saturday <laughs> on top of it. but. Well, who are you seeing that's really rising there? Obviously, Tariq Smith got banged up again last week. Uh, I was wondering what his status was, but how much has been able to play those young guys paid off already early in this season? I'm talking about, you know, yeah. throughout the defense. Yeah, no, um, you know, it's hard to pick out one or two guys. I think they're all kind of swarming to the ball, and, and different guys have, have flashed at different times. Um, you know, Josh was in a couple opportunities to make those plays. You know, one of them, his eyes were actually looking to match somebody, so it kind of caught him and it looked funky because it, it hit his knee. But his eyes were actually weren't on the quarterback at that play, but he was in the right spot to make the play. And uh, you know, he's flying around, he's doing a great job. But there, there's a lot of guys over there that are that are working at it. I think as a defense, you know, we've been able to play some of that depth. I think the depth is getting better. They're playing better now as the more experience they have. But again, when you watch the film, there's so much to improve on. There's so many things we got to get cleaned up. So. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say there's any one guy, but, but guys have definitely flashed in their own, in their own uh, you know, opportunity when they've been out there. Uh, second row middle, Bruce. I think three times now you've said that, that there's a lot of things on film without you know, causing the empire to topple from within. Can you share with us, take us inside what they are? Yeah, I, I wouldn't say it's one or two things. It's just you know, alignment, assignment, execution, uh, fundamentals, just all those things that um, 
you know, when, when we're focusing on playing hard and playing tough and playing physical, you know, you're not talking about those other things. You're not talking about the exact step you're going to take. We don't care, you know, we knock the guy out, knock the guy over. Um, you know, knock the guy back if you're an offensive lineman. Take that ball, put it chin, 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 and run as hard as you can, you know. And so that without that, we have no chance. Okay, now can we do that with also high-end high, high end execution, high-end fundamentals? And, and if we can do that, then we can take the next step. You made the comment after the game Saturday that you want to correct without creating resentment. Um, safe to say that's not been a concern of football coaches down through the ages, maybe some of the ones who coached here, like Woody, Bo, you know, Michigan and others. Like, I wonder where that mindset comes from you. Is that from a leadership thing? Is well, that it's funny you say experience? that because I actually talked to a bunch of people about Woody Hayes, and uh, he actually, uh, from what, from what the stories I've heard, is that he didn't create resentment, that he was really hard, but he didn't create resentment, and the players loved him. And I think that's really important is, you know, a great coach can make corrections, show, show someone where they need to improve, but then – uh, don't belittle them or, or make them feel like you know they're inferior because they made a mistake. If they're going really, really hard, here, here's how you become great. And uh, that's really, really important. And with young kids, we have to keep focused as well. That's part of this. But um, you know, th these guys are willing to go hard. And it just goes back to the whole thing about love. You know, I mean, do they fear you? Do they love you? And I, I think that you know, right now our guys love us as, as coaches. We love them. And, and so that's, that's healthy in my opinion. So that's that's our goal this week. Make those corrections. Don't create resentment and keep the goals. Bill, Bill alluded to Coach Martin's comment earlier about the recess and you get the first 85 picks. I wonder if ever at New Hampshire or maybe Temple, can you think back on a time where you went into a game where it looked similarly unbalanced in that regard? And what's the mindset of the of coaching staff when you were on that other side? Um, yeah, I mean, I've coached a couple different places. And, you know, you, all you really do when you look into a game is just – you know, just trying to execute, and, and you know, you don't worry so much about all that. Um, you know, I've been in, I've been in that role before, but but that, that has nothing to do with you know your team, your execution, your motivation, things like that. It's an opportunity, and every week's an opportunity, and so uh, you look at it that way. And again, you, it ends up going back to your training. So it, as hard as you practice, as hard as you work, that's what you're going to come back to in the end, and how hard you prepare. And, uh, you know, some of our guys on Friday night before the game, you know, they're up in their room when I'm doing bed check and they're going through their tips, they're going through their film, they're going through all those stuff to get themselves prepared. And, uh, you know, as long as we're really challenging our guys to make sure they're doing that in preparation, physically, mentally, emotionally, and then, then you know, playing on the field takes care of itself. You got time for two more. Uh, fourth row, left center, Patrick. After the game, <clears throat> Justin talked about, you know, what he thought he didn't do well. He also talked about going to TK after the Touchdown and you know, tell him to let it go. Chris said he also came to him after one of the high passes and took credit for that. Um, I'm curious, just his improvement as a leader. You talked preseason about needing to see more of that. Have you seen that as, as the season has kind of gotten underway and taking that ownership? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah, and uh, the guys on the team, uh, you know, really respect him and, and the way he goes about his business. And uh, yeah, I, I saw that same thing too. You know, it's easy to. Uh, go in the tank after a play like that. It's kind of a routine play. We didn't make it. Um, and as frustrating as that is, uh, we need to move on to play the next play. And that, that's a credit to all the guys is that um, there's no reason to look back on it and, and start to, uh, you know, struggle in terms of moving forward. you got to move on to the next play. That being said, you know, we got to make those plays. And um, so that's what we'll drill this week. And uh, far right over here, Clay. In, uh, in hockey, they have the Gordie Howe hat trick and a goal assist in a fight. Do you think Chris Olave could start kind of like the daily double TV catch and a block of I mean, is he, what he's doing starting to become, I don't know, legend? Well, he, uh, he certainly the last six games he's had, he's had his production's been off the charts. And, but that's the way he practices. Uh, <laughs> and when you go back through and watch the film of the last few weeks, I mean, he's practicing that way. And uh, this is a guy who's highly productive for a reason because that's the way he works. You know, he knows what he's doing when he's out there. He takes the job very serious, and, and he practices really, really hard. And anytime you practice really, really well, you gain the confidence of the guys around you. And, you know, like in the, on that punt block, I think everybody on that team believed he would block the punt if everybody did their job. So Taraja Mitchell goes through and knocks the shield back. Austin Mack pours it into the, to the right shield, and that the whole thing collapsed down. And that, without those two guys, that would never would have happened. And then Chris comes off the edge. So it's belief based on your practice habits. You know, if we're throwing a go ball or we're throwing a post, 
and uh, you know we're dropping it in practice or we're not where we're supposed to be. There's no belief there. But when you do it in practice and you believe in somebody, then then uh, that makes a big difference in game because confidence is critical. You know, especially when it's time to execute on the game field. So. Great, coach. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you. Thank you.